I'm here with Brian Pullett, who has built this fantastic World War II Jeep 6x6. It's incredible. We went on a drive with him, and Brian, all I can say, it was incredible. You let me drive it, this is like nothing I've driven before. Thank you for building it. Uh, well, that's uh, good. I'm uh, um, pleased to see that you enjoyed it, and uh, bit different with the steering wheel on the wrong side for oh, you. Oh, that's what, that was the fun part. <laughs> I mean, I've driven Jeeps all over the world, but never a six by six right-hand drive in Australia where things go backwards. It was, it was awesome. I even stayed on the right side of the, left side of the road. It's been a, a project and been in the family for nearly 40 years. 40 years, and, yeah. Uh, yes, and uh, it's well-liked wherever it goes. People just love it. Um, yeah. yeah, well, being a, a World War II Jeep isn't cool enough, but you have a flathead Ford V8 engine in it. Uh, well, the, my theory was this is how Ford should have built them. All this was available there at this time. Absolutely. And this is how they should have built them. Well, I'm glad you built it to show them how it should have been done. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looked like when I first rebuilt it uh, with the old body. And the only thing that's still um, I kept out of it is the group yeah yeah so how did you find this and I, where did you find this I built it 42 years ago I originally built it 42 years ago and Michael did a bit of an article on me because that's one of my that's a J10 yeah. my ball wagon right? <laughs> Michael did an article on me here here we go this is some of the Jeeps that I've had. A lifetime of building Jeeps. Sure. Right. I actually remember reading this. <laughs> You're reading this? <laughs> yep. I'm only too pleased to have brought it down here for you yeah. fellas to Thank you so much. have a play and a drive with it. And oh, just, this is the highlight of my trip. <laughs> and uh, just to let see how we do it over here in Oz. Yeah. That's great. Thank you so much. Appreciate your help. All right, let's go for a drive. Isn't that sweet? Just go to the pond, like just there. Yeah. All right, so we're driving around in Bryant, six by six, flathead Ford V8 powered Ford Jeep. And yeah, it is a script Ford too. Oh, there's so many details on this that you would not believe. It's a special Jeep, of course. Not that all Jeeps aren't special. But listen to that engine. That isn't a regular Jeep engine. That is a flathead Ford V8 from the 30s. He's put this in, hooked up a out here we drive on left we <laughs> hooked up a t14 to an 18 and a 20 transfer case so that he can drive one axle two axles or three axles and he can do it in two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive so it's just a matter of driving this around in the rain in Australia, which is probably the most impressive thing that anybody's done with a 6x6. Now the truth of the matter is these were made, 6x6s were made during World War II. This of course is a re reproduction type of vehicle. And there were no factory Ford V8s produced in Jeeps. However, Wally Parks of the National Hot Rod Association, when he was uh, with the Flying Tigers in World War II, actually had a Ford GP and he put a flathead Ford in one. Being the industrious type of character he was. Yeah, this is it's pretty stylish. And you notice, since it's a right-hand drive, they didn't make those out of the factory either. Brian faithfully duplicated most things that were important, such as the glove box on the opposite side. Oh, listen to that. And then this 
gauge, the temperature gauge is really cool because there's two gauges in one because the flathead Ford has two temperature centers. It doesn't share that coolant very well, so you want to know what the temperature is on each head. So driving this is a drain. It's, it's like a World War II Jeep, but better. And you can take along your whole family or a bunch of your friends. And it's 12 volt. See, he's upgraded. Well, the underside is, is, is pure magic. I mean, it's upgraded with a dual master cylinder, things like 11 inch brakes, yet it, it all looks full on World War II military. It's, it's got the clutch crossover linkage, which is obviously all hand done, but with original parts that the average Jeep guy would never know. This isn't a stock World War II Jeep conversion or anything like that. It was a general's Jeep. Yeah, that's it. So I, the biggest problem that I have with this, being a right-hand drive, is that I can't have my foot out the door because it's my gas pedal foot. You notice that the first gear is synchronized. That's because it's a T14 Jeep tranny. And it's the one with a synchronized first gear on a three speed. Came out of about a 74 Jeep.